So I watched one of my old tutorials from about two years ago, and it was absolutely cringe. Let's take a look at the mask modifier. Alright guys, how's it going? Now a user commented in a very old video, I had to re-watch it to kind of remind myself, and when I was watching it, I just sat there thinking, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So I thought this would be a good excuse to revisit the mask modifier. Now before we even start, let me show you a very quick tip. I can go to edit, I can go to preferences, I can go to editing and I can drop down to weight paint and I can actually use custom colours for my weight painting. I don't necessarily need to use the standard default colours, you probably should, but in case you ever wanted to know, there it is. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object and then I'm going to go into weight paint. Now I'm only going to quickly add a gradient weight map, so I'm going to go to the gradient tool and we'll just drag it across like this. Looking good, I have a value of 1 and a value of 0. But just to keep things nice and tidy, I'm going to go to the vertex group and I'm going to call this my weight paint. I'll then quickly jump back into object mode, I'll go to the spanner and I'll add in the mask modifier. Now what I can do here is, I can select the vertex group, which I called my weight paint, funnily enough, and I can play around with the threshold and we get this nice dissolve effect. Now this can be keyframed, so for example I'll go to frame 20, I'll right click and set a keyframe, I'll then go to frame 100, I'll put this to a value of 1, and I'll keyframe it here, and we get this animated mask effect. Now the user asked a question, and I'm not entirely sure what he meant, he says can you use materials on the object, and the answer to that is yes, let's quickly add in a basic material, so let's do something like this, let's jump into the viewport, so yes, you can, but what I think the user meant was, can you use like a texture map or a gradient to achieve the same effect? And the answer to that is yes, and I will set up a quick gradient shader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly delete the mask modifier just to give us a good start. I'll quickly jump into the shading editor of this basic PBR material. Now the first thing I'm going to drop down is a texture coordinate node. What I do recommend is you actually install Node Wrangler so you can automatically set this up. But anyway, we'll press Shift and A, we'll search and we'll drop down a mapping texture. We'll take the generated value, we'll plug this into the vector, we'll keep it on point. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to separate the vector. So I'll press Shift and A, S to search and we'll look for the separate X, Y and Z node and we'll plug this into the vector, and now I can separate it on the X, or the Y, or the Z for example. And we'll use a good old trusty colour ramp, I'll press Shift A, S to search, colour ramp, and we'll do this on the Z axis. So we'll take the Z, we'll plug this into the factor, and just to have a kind of view of what we're doing, we'll plug this into the base colour, and you can see here it's kind of dark here, and I can move these values. Now these can actually be animated, so we can actually right click, insert keyframe as well, so we can pretty much achieve the exact same effect. What we can actually do is we can use something like an empty and we can control the empty, but we'll leave it at this at the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plug the colour into the alpha and the PBR material, so we'll plug this into alpha here. Now you might not necessarily see something, you might get this kind of dark effect, and the reason for this is we need to go into the material settings and we need to change the settings of the blend mode. So alpha hashed probably should do the job. And there we go, we get this nice transparency effect. And like I mentioned, we could keyframe these values, so we can do it on and off like this. And it pretty much replicates the mask modifier. The great thing about doing it this way is, we have a little bit more control when it comes to the channel, so we can do it on the X, Y and Z. And that's been today's tutorial, and hopefully it's not as cringy. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It costs you nothing, just, just hit that button. Uh, follow me on Twitter, you know what to do. Take care.